Hi, this is Lucien, DH7LM and welcome back to Ham Radio Soul. If you're like most hams, you don't live on a big farm where you can erect huge towers, right? In other words, you are antenna restricted in one form or another. Maybe you have a landlord who doesn't approve of antennas. Maybe you have a homeowners association that doesn't want you to erect antennas. And maybe you have neighbors that just don't like the sight of antennas and you want to maintain good neighborhood. Whatever the case may be, you have to put up with the restrictions. So what can you do? I think it's important to get into the right mindset first. There's a nice story in Bill Mirror's book Solder Smoke, which I can highly recommend by the way, that uh, talks about a ham who liked repairing his equipment so much that he went to ham fests and flea markets to deliberately buy defect equipment, right? And he even was ready to pay a premium <laughs> for it. He went to the vendors and said, doesn't work, I'll pay extra. So I think that's kind of the spirit. In other words, antenna restrictions, I'll pay extra. I think there is really some good ham spirit there because we hams like to experiment, to come up with new ideas, to solve problems, right? And antenna restrictions are just another challenge. So it can really mobilize some great inventions and creativity if you have to deal with the restrictions. I mean, every game has rules, right? That's why we play them. So think about antenna restrictions just as another rule in a very good game in, that is fun, that we can play. Or think about it this way, there will always be limitations, right? There, there will never be the perfect station, the perfect antenna or whatever. Even if you can put up like five towers in your, on your big farm, there's always gonna be a guy with ten towers and even bigger antennas. So it's really not worth uh, worrying too much about the perfect solution. So why not just accept what you can do and make the best of it? You'll have plenty of fun, you'll make great contacts, you learn a lot, so everything's good. But what are some concrete solutions? Well, it obviously depends on your situation. If you have some space outside that you can use, but you don't want your neighbors or whoever to feel bad to have to look at your ugly antenna or what have you, you can try stealth antennas. That means you put up antennas that are all but invisible, right? And uh, one way to do that is to use really thin but robust wire for wire antennas that you can buy at uh, specialized ham shops. You'll find them online as well. And uh, these are really great because I, I tried them myself and it's really impossible to see them unless you really look hard. So that would be a, a good solution for a stealth antenna. And I think a particularly good stealth antenna is the NFET half wave antenna, which I also use here. And the, the advantage of this antenna is that it only needs one suspension point, which means that you can just uh, throw one wire over a tree or over a flagpole or whatever you have, uh, however you can make it work and you don't need a long and uh, ugly cable dangling from some tree or dangling from the middle of the dipole or something. So it's really very stealth. If you don't have enough space you might try shortened antennas or you might even try a mobile whip or something. There are these things called ham sticks and uh, they work very, very well, although they are kind of limited in the bandwidth, which is always the case if you have a small antenna. But uh, they're like 2 meter 50 in length and you can try that. Um, there's also a solution called body pole where you can connect two of these ham sticks to form a dipole right? So it might be five meters long or something. So five meters is not really long. So you might be able to put that thing up in a tree or wherever, right? And speaking of body pole, uh, if you don't have space outside available, 
you can even put something like this on the balcony, right? If you have a balcony, that's already a good asset. So a body pole or something like that, I think works pretty good. Also, another option is a magnetic loop antenna, which I personally haven't tried yet, to be honest, but people say they work pretty good, especially if you can put them outside on a balcony or something. So you might want to give that a shot. If you have an attic available, that's great. Uh, that opens up a whole lot of new options. For example, you can put a wire antenna in there, you know, like stick it to the ceiling of the roof and you don't even need to have the space for a full dipole. You can also like arrange it in zigzag forms like this, this, this or something uh, or at each side of the roof. And you might be surprised how well these antennas work. I personally had uh, wire antennas in my attic for a long time and they work very, very well. Of course, you can also put VHF, UHF antennas in your attic and you might again be surprised how well they work. Sometimes it's no difference at all between an attic antenna and an outside antenna. It depends a bit on, on your roof, obviously. If you have a metal roof or a roof where there's a lot of metal elements so that might be a problem but you can just check and find out or just give it a try and see how it works if you don't have an attic you don't have a balcony you don't have a garden or something then it really gets harder to be honest but there are still solutions for example you can use a wire antenna that you just put on your ceiling right just be creative and route it through rooms or what have you and it might be a bit more difficult to get the SWR right because of all the interference and all of that but just give it a shot again be creative also a magnetic loop I've heard can work well uh, indoors even you might also try something like a buddy pole or hamstick or something which isn't that long so that might work indoors as well. Another option that you can try is to just throw a wire out of your window, right? Uh, it, you need to use a tuner, maybe a, a manual tuner with a wide range to make this work and just take a wire, throw it out of the window and see how it goes. Still another option, especially if you live in an apartment that is on a higher floor, would be to take a, one of these fishing poles and just put it out the window horizontally with a wire on it. You can even wrap the wire around the fishing pole to make, a, make it shorter. I've heard from guys who use this on, even on 80 meter with uh, great results. But of course, don't do anything illegal. <laughs> Please be safe, whatever you do, right? Last but not least, you can also always tune up the proverbial bed spring. Because if you take a manual tuner or an auto tuner, you can connect it to almost anything made of metal. I personally had some interesting results with tuning up the rain gutter. Uh, I mean, it wasn't really perfect, but it worked. I, I did make contacts and uh, depending on your rain gutter, it might even work pretty good. So I would definitely recommend just exper experimenting a little and uh, tuning up all kinds of stuff that you can find. One thing I would say though is if you do these kinds of experiment, especially indoors and tuning up weird stuff, I would really stick to QRP, i.e. low power levels, because uh, it can be pretty dangerous otherwise. So that would be definitely worth considering. Okay, so these were some ideas that you can Google and take as an inspiration to find a solution that might work for you. But another thing that I'd like to say is if you don't like your QTH or you have really severe antenna restrictions, you can always go portable. I did that for years and I had great fun with it. Just take a fishing pole, for example, that you can put up almost everywhere or throw a wire in a tree or something and you'll enjoy working with a full-length dipole or full-length NFET half wave. And this works really well, especially if you have a good spot, right? Let's say on a hilltop or something. 
it's really great fun and nowadays it's very easy to do so go portable that's really worth it another thing that you might want to think about is learning CW because in my experience if you have to deal with restrictions maybe you have to deal with antenna restrictions plus you only operate QRP or something it can be really hard on SSB to be honest but on CW on the other hand I was really surprised when I first learned the code and had my first QSOs how well it worked even under very very limited conditions like with a wire in the attic and 5 watts I had really lots of great contacts and obviously the same is true for digi modes that also have a huge advantage over SSB in terms of uh, effect and uh, bandwidth and all of that so you get a lot of signal out and there are many guys on the bands using digital modes and CW who don't necessarily have huge stations and on SSB most people operate with higher power levels and with big stations so that's kind of hard sometimes another forgotten option is to just go to your local ham club and use the club station that's also a great way to having some fun with a good effective station so if you miss the feeling of operating a, a high power station just you know talk to the people in your ham radio club and uh, have fun lastly I'd like to say a word about good neighbors because I think we hams shouldn't see this as a war of hams against the rest of humanity or something. I mean, there are other things important in life and uh, having good relationships with your neighbors is definitely one of them, I think. And so I think it's important to, to be a good neighbor, to talk to people, uh, and uh, you also gain a little more wiggle room when it comes to antennas and your ham radio hobby. You know, if you, if you know the people and have a good relationship, you can always talk to them, maybe find a compromise or something without going full, you know, legal and uh, suing people or whatever. You know, um, I mean, we live in communities, we have to get along, so. I personally wouldn't want to, to erect a huge tower that everyone hates in my neighborhood and uh, maybe I have a good antenna then but I, I'm always sad when I go outside because I meet my neighbors and they hate me. <laughs> so I personally wouldn't want that. So it always depends on your situation of course but I would say don't see this as a huge conflict but try to work something out and even if you can't there are other options as we just saw so have fun do what you have to do be creative come up with new ideas try new stuff make contacts and don't despair if something doesn't work out for you just try another thing until you find a solution that you like and that gives you the most you can do with your situations. Best of luck to you and if you like the video please consider subscribing and see you next time. 73s. Bye bye.